Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, are you living in your full power? What does that mean? <laughs> feel powerful? Should you feel powerful? Are we talking about ego? Or are we talking about just natural grace of living powerfully in the world, in our lives? And to help us do that as well as we can, <laughs> is the author who I've had on the show many times. And this is her best-selling book, which is uh, a new edition. It's The Road to Power, Fast Food for the Soul. I'm so happy to have Barbara Berger back with us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What a great introduction. I'm so happy to be back. Well, thank you. So this is very important to find ourselves being powerful in life because I think nowadays most people don't. And I think the world is in such chaos and values are being challenged all over the place that we, we question everything and maybe we shouldn't be questioning ourselves and you can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my book, The Road to Power, um, this is, I'm so happy with this new edition. It's, it's, a, it's been out for a while, this book, and it's published in 30 languages, and it's really sold many, many copies around the world. And this is a new US-UK edition coming out, just came out now in America. So I'm so happy with the way they've done it. But anyway, this is a book about the power of the mind, the power of your mind, my mind, and everyone else's mind. It's a, it's a book about understanding the way our minds work so that we can claim our own power and that we can use this power wisely, consciously to, to create better lives for ourselves, to have a more satisfying, fulfilling journey. So, so it's a book, this book is about understanding and taking charge of our minds, which we can only do if we understand the way the mind works. Right. Our minds can be our biggest culprit. Absolutely, absolutely. So the mechanism of mind, um, that's what this book is about. And I think probably the reason why the book has been such a success, why it's so popular in so many countries, is because it's a very, very practical book. Once I have explained sort of the basic premise, the, the, the power of the mind, every chapter has specific and very practical techniques that you can use immediately to, to work on applying the power of your own mind more wisely. Yeah, well, I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. what I was thinking while you were talking is that this book isn't about being smarter. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, yes, you, when we talk you about the it. mind, we think, <laughs> oh, good, now I can be smarter. But this is really about being wiser. Definitely about being wiser, but, but let's just say that the mechanism of mind, the basic mechanism of mind is what you focus your attention on grows in your experience. That, that is the determining factor in each one of our individual subjective experiences of life. I mean, things happen, events happen, and our choice, our power lies in the way we decide to relate to what's happening. For example, I follow you, Peter, and all your teachings and all your spiritual classes. You have all these questions you ask people, and then you discuss with people, what are we, how are we going to relate to this information? That's, that's the power of the mind, the power of our choice, that when we understand that we are the only thinkers in here, I'm the only thinker in my mind, you're the only thinker in your mind, and we get to decide how we relate to what's going on. In other words, do we, I like to say sometimes, are we problem oriented or are we solution oriented? You can have exactly the same circumstances, the same situation, and you can focus on everything that can go wrong, all the negative, all the problems, and you, you put energy into that and you get more of that, or you can focus on the potential, all the good that could come out of it, what you can learn from this situation, and then you put energy into that and you get more of that. So that mechanism, that's the, the, the key to taking control of our experience. Right, that's why I, I call it power, power. Right, <laughs> and, I, and I think, 
there's, there's something about this, though, that has to do with heart and soul. It has to do with self-belief because doubting, being um, questioning things, there are people who question things and can hold it in power and people who question things yeah. feel weakened by it. Yes, I agree. But that again, it's a still, if you say, when you question something, you can say, what can I learn from this? Why is this a gift? Or you can say, oh shit, why is this happening to me? I mean, in other words, you, it, it, it's true. There are different ways of questioning too. Right, and one thing is about questioning why something is happening to us mm -hmm. and understanding that that's really not a, a healthy direction to go into because it's very uh, victim-oriented. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But the idea, I think, is that, because I question a lot of things. I'm, I, I worry a lot. Mm -hmm. But I, I worry in ways that I think are problem-solving. Good. And, and I also trust in, the, we'll talk more about later, trust in the force to mm -hmm. take care of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. I don't have the answers. <laughs> well, that's actually, but that's a really important thing. That there's a lot about that in this book. That the nature of reality, as you say, I call it the force, the nature of reality, the God force, whatever we call it. But that that to to understand that God is all and God is good, and and how much of this we surrender to, we allow to manifest in our lives. That's again our choice. In other right. words. Part of our problem all the time is our limitation thinking and what you're saying and is what what this book is about is opening yourself more to the good that is everywhere present, but that with with our programming we are holding keeping away from us. Well, I think it's hard nowadays with the world in such turmoil mm -hmm. to understand the, the pervasiveness of good, because there's so much, it's called bad happening. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, tragedies, terrorism, all kinds of things, mm -hmm. and also very bad uh, propaganda out there that's distorted. But, but again, it, you could say one of the important things is in this situation, which your description, I, I would not disagree with, but how can we best serve ourselves and humanity? I mean, do we serve best by lowering our frequency and, and joining the moaning and the groaning and complaining? Or do we serve better by focusing on the highest good and, and lifting our vibrational quality? And it's also a question about that the higher frequencies are more powerful in their influence. So, so there's many aspects to this. One, right. one enlightened being, I mean, one person like the Dalai Lama or Mother Teresa, these people who are very, very high in frequency, that, that they are, their influence on millions of people with the love vibration, with the soothing, with the comforting. So, so I think that that's really an important question for people like you and I also in I mean how do we best contribute in a positive way especially as you say when the world has so many challenges at the moment well but I think we're also different and only certain people are listening to us and reading your book those are the mm -hmm. people who um, they're open to this information right. yeah. exactly and so there yeah. are so many people in the world who aren't of a vibration that is interesting. And uh, they are, you know, even if you you want the good, let's say, and you feel like you have to go to war for it, you know, I'm not a political protester. Maybe I was when I was in my 20s, but. I certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know. And so, so uh, but as we got older, we realized um, there are, or higher frequency ways of dealing with things. Exactly. And so even now, you know, I'm saying, how can we say that everything is good when there's so much bad? And I, my philosophy really is that we're being detoxified. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the good is actually 
pushing out the, the well, darkness. That's a really positive way of looking at it. I, I, I can go for that one. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. But I think the other, the other thing about what you just said that I think is important here, um, because the frequencies are so different and it's, I always say that it's like, it's a pyramid, uh, uh, the, the, the mass consciousness here. And then as people evolve the higher frequencies, there's less and less people who are on the higher frequencies. That's just the nature of this thing called life, the evolution, but that we are, we are teachers for the ones who are in the neighborhood. As you said, there's only certain people who would even read one of my books. Right. People who are in the neighborhood. And so that makes me the teacher for them, just like the people who, who contact you, who listen to your, who go to your classes, who join. I mean, there are people who are in the range that they can actually hear what you say or they can hear what I say. And those are the people that that's like our job. And then we have the ones who we look up to, are the, 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 the great souls that, I mean, I know who, who my gurus are, the ones that, so, so, I, I always say to everyone, we have our students and we have our teachers, no matter where we are on the evolutionary scale. This is the so, force so, at work. <laughs> exactly. So, so, so it's, it, again, the whole idea, you know, that you, you're supposed to fix it for everyone. I think that's a good one. I use this af affirmation. I fully and freely release, loose, let go and let God. I mean, I do as much as I can where I am. Right. And I know That's you do. Very important is that yeah. we have to live in the world where we are personally given. Yeah. You know, we have I mean, to only stand in our own footprint. But I mean, I always say, like, every person has a hemisphere of influence, right. you know, and you have this ripple effect. And so some people have huge hemispheres of influence, and some have very tiny. And, and someone like me, now, this book, for example, that's really for me. Right. 30 countries, I mean, it's almost a million copies of this book has been sold. And I get letters and emails all the time from people that tell me that this was the book that did it for them. So, so that's my hemisphere of influence. I mean, I've sold really a lot of books in Japan. Just think about that. Well, almost a, almost so 100,000 copies of this book sold in Japan. Wow. <laughs> no, but this book has so many parts to it. Uh, that I f feel people can can learn from you. Really, you know, cover the gamut of power, of personal, <laughs> of how to be personally powerful in life, yeah. including you know how to live each day in in the best quality of of giving, of generosity, of of surrendering, of releasing. Mm of uh, seeking out alpha waves. <laughs> <laughs> Meditation, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's ways that, you know, but you're, it's not like, okay, to be powerful, you just have to meditate a lot. Uh, no. it's, it's actually to be powerful, I think, more than anything, you have to release a lot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I would say. Well, that's one of the first chapters. I would also like to say it's true, part of the thing about the book is that, each chapter could be a whole book. And so that's one of the reasons why people like the book so much. It is, as you say, every single chapter is a different aspect of taking back your power. For example, the power of release or the power of giving or, or the power of, of nature or the power of silence, these different approaches. And, and in each chapter, I try to give, you know, the essence of what it's about and then a practical exercise that you can do immediately. Right. And so, so you can take it like that. But you've also uh, written other books on top of it yes. that, that you drew from, from this. From well, actually, uh, and actually, I'd like to say it to our listeners. When this book first came out, it was so popular here in Denmark. Right? I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. I was invited on this big show for, for New Year's Eve. Uh, and, and the callers called in and asked, you know, this book is so fantastic. It helps so much. Why does it work? Why do these techniques work so, so well? And then when I got, and I answered about the, the way the mind works, and I, I used the phrase, the mental laws. And then when I got home, I realized it was so brilliant what I, my explanation. So I wrote it down. And that's a little book called The, the Mental Laws, Understanding the Way the Mind Works. Right. And, and we have made an ebook, and it's, we're giving it away for free. So if you go into my website, 
you can get your free ebook, The Mental Laws. It says how to do it on the front, front and, of the and website. And what is your website? Beam Team, B E A M T E A M dot com. So if you're interested in the this this explanation, the mental laws is actually the reason why the techniques in this book, <laughs> The Road to Power, actually are so effective. And I wrote it on the back of this because I had so many reader questions. Why does it work? It does work. Everybody says it works, but why does it work? Well, I was looking at how this worked in my life when I was younger, and I, I was in lack. I was uh, really mm -hmm. suffering from unhappiness and disappointment, and I needed to change things. Mm -hmm. And and so I, there there are ways that you talk about in here about letting go of old patterns and negative mm -hmm. beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I was clear about that. I that I looked at all these people around me who seemed successful and happy, and I said, "What's the difference between me and them?" Mm -hmm. And I I said, "Well, I just haven't chosen to be powerful. I okay, haven't that's, chosen, that's, hmm? you know, to to be happy. I've I've been under this I in this pressure, this feeling that I'm not worthy." And I, and I looked around and I said, I'm as good as everybody else. <laughs> so I'm now expecting the force, I didn't call it the force, whatever I called it then, I don't know, uh, that to support this, that I'm a new person who is going to be happy and successful. Mm -hmm. Right away, immediately after that, mm -hmm. magic happened. The Isn't that a great, that's a great story, Peter. In a number of ways, and yeah. I'm still riding the magic <laughs> carpet of, of, of that time. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, about 43 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another time, I, I, I surrendered to the fact that I wasn't going to meet anybody to be a life partner with, um, even though I had gone through two marriages already. <laughs> <laughs> and some disappointing relationships. I I just said, well, I'm okay anyway. I'm mm -hmm. just not going to harbor, you mm -hmm. know, uh, lack about it. I'm going to have a good life no matter what. Good. And I. And then she the showed door. up, right? <laughs> Within several minutes <laughs> of that, <laughs> really, I stepped out the door when about uh, 200 yards into the park to go for a run and she was running along the path i'd never met her before and mm -hmm. we've been together for 39 years Beautiful. so that's but that's the power of mm -hmm. believing mm -hmm. in everything is going to work out in mm -hmm. some way as long as you believe in yourself mm -hmm. and believe in the universe believe in the force working mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. but in ways that we don't know we can't force we can't no, it. no, it's get you. It's not. You're not. It doesn't suit us. It doesn't work. We limit actually the power of the universe if we sort of outline. It has to be like this. Right. It's much better. The, the, the approach is correct that you have. That you know, I'm, it's, everything is going to work out, but I don't know quite how. And then yeah, you're you, you, had, you had an example of that when you were sitting on a curb in Mexico City. <laughs> I know. And here I am in Scandinavia. How many years later? But actually, I don't know if we have enough time. But it, I think it would be interesting to tell how this book was born. Actually, do we have a few minutes? Yeah, left? we we have uh, several minutes. Sure. Okay. Well, I think it's really interesting the the way this book was born. At it, it came to me at a time when I was a single mother with three sons to support. And I was working as a copywriter, um, writing English copy for big Danish international companies. That was how I supported myself and the kids. And I was very stressed. And I decided that I needed to take some time off. So I took three weeks off. It was summer. And I told everyone that I was going to Australia. So everybody thought I was gone. And instead of going anywhere, I, I took my bicycle and I went north of Copenhagen, where there are a lot of woods and beaches and forests and and I went every day alone for three weeks and meditated and sat under the trees and went swimming and did all this stuff. And on the very last day of the three weeks, I was sitting on the beach alone. The sun was going down. 
and I had no intentions of writing a book. I had written a lot of books already, but I wasn't thinking about writing a book. And the sun was going down and I was sitting there and then it was as if I got knocked on the head. And a voice said to me, Barbara, you're going to write a book, so take out a pencil and paper. And I thought to myself, wow, because that had never happened to me before. And like Wonderful. That. And, I, and I did. And, so, and then the voice said, the name of the book is The Road to Power. And I wrote that down. And chapter one is The Power of, and it dictated it to me, the whole book. Wow. And then when it was done, it said, now go home and write it. And I thought, holy <laughs> Wow. So then I went home and I wrote this book. It was really easy. I just, I knew what to write. It just flew out of me. And then I, after I had written it, I sent it to the person, the, the, the big publisher I had at the time in Denmark. Um, and they rejected it to my great surprise and said that. So all of that for naught. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I sent it to other publishers and everyone rejected it and said it was way too simple. It couldn't be right. And I got really upset by that and really angry. And I thought, well, if nobody will publish it, I heard this voice and I know that there's a powerful message here. I'm gonna publish it myself. Right. So I decided to publish it myself. I decided that I would print a thousand copies and if nobody wanted it, I would give it to all my friends and at least I had fulfilled the mission of the universe. Good. And, so, and so I did that. And at the same time, I was a coach mentor for uh, Denmark's most famous woman author, best-selling author, very, very famous, sold millions of books. Um, and she was in the hospital with cancer. And to comfort her, I would visit her. And then I gave her the manuscript of this, which she lay in the hospital reading the Road to Power manuscript. And again, the way the universe works, on the day that I got a thousand books delivered to my office, she came out of the hospital and she wrote a full page article, which was on the Sunday, like the new, it was the New York Times of Denmark. It came on the front page of this Sunday section about my book. And so. Well, and those there, thousand copies went fast. <laughs> exactly, so, so the way the universe works, but I knew the way this book was born and the, the whole thing about it. And it's the same with all these other countries, the way it finds people and, and so, so there is some kind of power that I don't even feel that it's my book, actually. I just feel, again, I, I was a channel for this information. I was oh, apparently because I was so empty after those three weeks. But I think that's how life works. And uh, mm -hmm. I've been downloaded with important yeah. programs. It was, the, and it was just the download, as you say. Right. It's amazing how clear these downloads can be. I mean, amazing. I wrote it all down, Peter. But you weren't looking for the download. No. no. That's the point. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it has to happen in its own fashion. Mm -hmm. and, and each person, not to necessarily be an author, but to be downloaded for who knows, all kinds of whatever, right? Yeah, businesses, whatever, mm -hmm. families, um, just ways to be, to be in life. Mm -hmm. We get downloads and advice. And and the idea is that it, really it's it, when you were on vacation, it was or, or your retreat, it was you were in an alpha wave state. Exactly the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's what we're talking about is mm -hmm. to be really powerful in life. You mm -hmm. have to surrender. You really have to be in a. Uh, I call it multi-dimensional reality. I, mm -hmm. I try to live that way every day, mm -hmm. where I'm just feeling the vibe, following the vibe and just appreciating what shows up within the vibe. And yeah, it's, it's very powerful and mm -hmm. uh, soul giving. And, and it really, you know, it makes you so happy not to have to effort so much. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's so, it's so interesting that you say that because I, if I would say anything about this book again, it, what you're saying there is it, something about that energy. Since it wasn't, since it was this download, it has that effort, effortless ease about it. The the messages are so easy and such good energy. It just there's that flow but, in it. But we have to remember to keep on. Yes. Forgiving for uh, 
a surrendering, uh, right. uh, blessing. Well, that's uh, actually, again, that's the, the key to the road of power, to road to power is what you're saying now that the, to become the conscious choice maker, just exactly what you're saying. That's the, the, the daily practice. Right. And those to remind choices. ourselves. Right. Right. To be, to be that person mm -hmm. who, <laughs> and, uh, I'm just thinking, how? I mean, that's we're talking about all spiritual practice. That's what we're talking about I, to be mindful. I was in the subway recently, and I got assaulted by a stranger. Okay. Uh, for no reason. I didn't even I hadn't even laid eyes on the guy. He was behind me, and he was angry about something. And I was just a body in front of him. And he threw me across the subway car bodily. I landed on a bunch of seated passengers, and I'm thinking, hmm, because they they protected me so I wasn't hurt um, and, and I'm thinking now what you know what do you <laughs> what do you do and and I said I have to address this person and, and it's not like I want to escalate it at all because I'm, I'm I'm like 40 years older than he was um, so I but I am a third degree black belt so I do have that sense of, mm -hmm. of placement in mm -hmm. physicality mm -hmm. and I, I just went over to him and I, uh, you know, I walked up to him, I looked him in the eye and I said, that wasn't very nice. No. <laughs> and then I walked away. Mm -hmm. But then my son, who was a prosecutor later said, you should have called the police right away. And, mm -hmm. and you know, cause this guy could, will do it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I, it, it was really an impractical. Well, I mean, again, it, it, this is the, the balance between, you could say, blessing the person in the sense that we know that this is a divine soul, but that the behavior is not acceptable right. and that it's not right. loving, respectful behavior among human beings. But so, to so, hold your own center. Exactly. That was the biggest thing is to hold mm. the center, mm. no matter what goes on around us. Mm. So we're getting at the end here. Okay. And I don't you'll, have to, you'll have to invite me back because we just start. No, we're going to do more. Of this. <laughs> so Barbara Berger, the author of The Road to Power, Fast Food for the Soul, and you're at beanteam.com. Mm. Barbara, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Peter. And this is Peter Roth, your host. <laughs> and I can be reached at Peter at HeartRiver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you and thanks so much for listening.